Welcome back to Charming Data, everybody, where you learn all about data visualization in Python. So this tutorial, I'm really looking forward to teaching you because I put many hours into it, and it's going to be very, very informative. You're going to learn all about the input element in uh, in websites and web apps. So you see how sometimes you can uh, input passwords, or they ask you to put text or telephone or email, URL, even this is an input box. Sometimes they'll ask you to put numbers. So I'm gonna teach you how to use these boxes, how to create these boxes in Python, and all about the language of debounce, read only, disable, and all the different types of things you can do with it. Um, we are going to use dash to do this, dash by Plotly. Um, so we'll click on the link below the page to open the description, sorry, and open um, below the video all the links that I gave you. This is the first link about input examples. You'll have the link to the code, and you'll have links to other things um, that they can, so you can follow along. In this tutorial, we're going to focus on the DCC input, the dash component input. Um, read this documentation if you want to, to understand more, but I'm giving you a nice summary of it. Um, uh, I've also uh, done in the past a few other uh, components, uh, so you can take a look at past videos or sign up, uh, subscribe below, turn on your notification for this channel because in the future I'm going to go over all the rest of these components so you can also learn about these as well, like the radio item, the date picker, uh, the tab, and so on and so on. The data we're going to use is data about bees in the United States. Why bees? Because I am passionate about bees, because I care about bees, and because I feel bad for bees, uh, because they're dying. They're dying in, in the millions, they're being affected by pesticides, they're being affected by um, disease and many different things, and we really need them. We need them for our fruits, for our vegetables, so I decided to focus on our bees. Uh, this also comes from the uh, U.S. Department of Agriculture, you can get it there, or you could just click on the link below the video and you get it here. Um, really, we're just going to focus on state, um, what is killing the bees, like pesticides or other causes, or uh, pests and, and uh, unknown causes, or varroa mites, this is a big thing. And value is just the number, of, the percentage of bee colonies that are affected by these diseases. All right. And then we have the code that we're going to focus on, which is right here. So open up the code and follow along. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is you want to um, import all these um, uh, dash uh, libraries and plotly so we can actually generate all this. Here, the only thing I'm doing is importing the data from the CSV um, uh, file and putting it into a pandas data frame, and then I'm just changing these long uh, row values to just uh, disease and other, just one, one word or two word names, so it's not that long. Um, renaming the columns and so on and so on. I'm going to add uh, the state, um, not ID, but the state like acronym, so it's easier to plot on the core plif map. And, and then I'm going to group by, so I filter it, and then I'm going to reset the index. So that's it. Here I'm just filtering the data. You can play around with it. Just click like uh, print uh, DF, uh, maybe the first five rows uh, here, or you can do it here, and you can see how things change as I filter and change things in the data. All right, so um, what we're going to do today is the DCC input. So these are all the different um, uh, parameters inside the DCC input that we're going to go over. Um, these are non-text, kind of mostly non-text. Um, later in the video, probably 10 minutes from now or 15 minutes from now, we're going to look into the, um, the text um, uh, parameters. Uh, if you want to just skip right into the text parameters, just below the video, look at the link. You'll also see where you can actually skip to that, that section of the video. But don't miss this if you don't know what mini length and autocomplete mean and placeholder and read only require because this is important and gives you a lot of power when you're creating these for your users in Python. Okay, and then uh, this is the graph that we're going to put under under the under the input boxes, and then this whole section here. I'm not going to go over it today because in this tutorial the focus is going to be on the input element. But if you want to learn more about uh, the callback and and the callback function, which allows us to connect between the pandas data frame data to the interactive Coraplith map, just click on the video above. 
next week, I think, I'll have the card up there that talks about an introduction to Dash and Plotly so you can understand exactly uh, what I'm doing uh, here below and how it's connected. All right. Uh, probably the most important thing you want to remember is this. We'll go back to this because we are using the insert the 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 information that the user is inserting in the input element to filter our data. So the year information is going to filter the year of the data frame. The password is going to filter the state and so on and so on. We'll go back to this later. Don't worry. And then we're building the BMAP with uh, Plotly Express Core Pleth using all these parameters. If you want to learn all about the core plath and how to build this map, all these parameters and much more, just go into the video above in the card, click on it, and you'll see the core plath video and all the functionality you can have with that. Play around with the styling here or the formatting, and then I'm spitting out the, the map below. Okay, so let's go into the map and see where is the map. Okay. So this is what we created. We created a map of all the B colonies uh, using the uh, input um, elements that will control the map a little bit. So the first thing we can control is the, let's take this out, the, the number element of the input. So if I put 2016, look at how the colors changes. See? So now this is all the Bs are affected by disease in 2016. Let's say I do 2017. These would be the sites in 2017. Um, if I want to see, for example, uh, bees are affected by varroa mites, I have autocomplete here, so let's do that. We'll go into, oops, varroa mites, and let's have, look how the color changes. Now it's a, a lot more red. You see New Mexico, for example, had 85% of their bee colonies were affected or died from varroa mites in 2017. And you have this nice legend here on the right. Um, okay, so... Let's go, let's jump right into um, the, the input boxes so you can learn all about them now that you know the layout and you know what the map looks like. So uh, DCC input is how you start the, the input. Here we're going to have, don't let this confuse you, this is a for loop that I'm creating for input types. So we're going to have several different types of input, number, password, text, email, all that. All these types are right here in the documentation. Make sure you read this at the very bottom. You'll see type. These are all the parameters. And you'll see type here. And you'll see all the different types of things you can put in there. We'll go over most of them, I think, except for, for range, which is very similar to number. So I'm not making this up. It's all from the documentation. Please, please, please read it. Okay. So we have here for X in all these types, right, all these. I'm going to create, so there's eight types here. I'm going to create eight different DCC inputs. So there's going to be eight um, uh, dash component inputs. And that's why we have eight different input elements that you see on the map, above the map. And each one is going to have their separate ID. This one is going to be my, let's see, the first loop is going to be my underscore number. Then it's going to be my underscore password. The type is going to be X. So the type is going to be either number or the second type is going to be password and so on and so on. And the placeholder is going to be the words inside uh, the input element, which is actually a hint to the user of what can be entered. So here we're going to say insert, and we're going to format it. We're going to put the X. So it's going to be insert password, insert uh, number, insert password, and insert text. So you see all this? Let's, these top three. Let's see how this actually works. Perfect. So you see these top three here? This is actually what we just went over. So we have um, the insert number as the uh, as the placeholder. It says insert number. The second placeholder is insert password, insert text, and so on and so on because we have um, input types right here. We have eight types, so we have eight different uh, placeholders and eight different input elements. Um, and this allows us to play around with the map. This Let's go over a brief introduction of how they look like. Insert number, the number um, uh, type. And we have type right here that says number. Um, then it's going to look like this. It's going to have arrows. And you can uh, go up or down with the number. Um, insert password is going to look like this. Let's say Oregon. You can't see it because that's how it's supposed to be. Unless you click on the eye and you can see it. And I click Enter. And now you see that Oregon became black. Insert text is just regular text. So you can put whatever you want in there. I put Texas, and I'm going to make Texas black. Take it out of the equation. 
Insert telephone, you can put where you can put text or you can put uh, numbers in it. I'm just going to put numbers. Let's put number 20 and that's state, I think, um, Georgia. No, that's Kansas. So that's going to get to Kansas now. And then email, when you have an input element that's email, it's going to ask you, uh, it's going to make sure that you try and put a valid email. So you see how it's red because there's no at sign. If I come out of this and I go here, you'll see it says, please include the at sign. So that's the advantage of an email. Let's put gmail.com. Uh, URL, same thing, HTTPS. If you don't complete it, it's not gonna, it's gonna tell you, please enter a URL. That makes sense. So we'll just put google.com and then insert a search. It's very simple. Search is very similar to text, but it kind of allows you, like when you have, um, it gives a hint to the browsers and, and like cell phones um, that that um, if you start putting numbers, it's going to search, it's going to pop up your contacts and maybe search numbers. If you start putting text, and maybe it'll pop up a keyboard that's that's text related. Um, today, the, they used to be different. Now they're very similar, but it, it does help a little bit with um, with the text that goes in there for especially for phones. Okay, so we're going to put overwhelm mites. Perfect. Okay, so these are the, the the different elements, and that's the basics of how how they look like. But what we're going to do now is learn these different parameters. All right. Okay. So the bounds true. The bounds true means that changes to the input are sent to the Dash server only on enter or losing focus. What does that mean? If I put true, which is right now true, let's say let's reset this. If I put 2015 here, nothing happens. I have to either lose focus, meaning I click out of this. Or I have to click enter like this. For it for it to actually change. Same thing here. If I put a password, let's say Texas, nothing happens. But if I click enter, you'll see Texas blackout. If I put this as false, it will automatically and say this, it will automatically change as soon as I change it. I don't have to hit enter. So let's reset this. Okay, I'll put number 215. I don't hit enter. I don't do anything. It already updates. Um, here I'll put Texas. I'm not hitting enter, nothing. And it already, uh, it's, oh, it's updating right now. It's just a little bit slower because I'm, I'm doing the video, but I didn't hit enter and it updated. So this is the bounce, okay? Most of the time, you want it to put it true because you want you want the uh, it slows down a little bit the app if every little letter changes um, updates the graph. So just let it put it at true, and then after the user finishes what they want to put in and hits enter, then it will change. Minimum maximum is probably what you guess. This is referring to the numeric values. So in this case, I the only numeric um, input type is is number. Um, so here it's going to say that the minimum value is going to be 2015, maximum value is going to be 2019 because that's what I have on the Excel sheet that is now in the Pandas data frame, and the step is going to be 1. So it's going to go 15 to 2016, 2017, and so on and so on. If I start in from 1, I would have a different option there. Let's save this, start from 1, look how that looks like, reload. Okay, um, you see now it starts from one, two, all the way to 2019. Obviously, this doesn't mean anything because I don't have that in the data frame. I need at least 2015. So I click enter, and here you have the data. So let's put this back. Okay, minimum length and maximum length. This refers to either number or uh, numeric or text input elements, and it ranges the character length inside the input box. So I'm just saying here that I'm allowing the user to have anywhere from zero characters to 50 characters. More than 50 characters, it's not going to allow me to put inside the input box. Um, so now let's try this, for example. I'm going to copy paste. Look how I'm going to put a text here. Now, if I continue, oops, it just reset one second. Okay, copy paste, and I continue, it stops. See, I'm clicking on the keyboard, and there's no more because there's 50 uh, characters there. It's not going to allow more than 50, and that's if you don't want people to just paste a lot of code or junk into your uh, input uh, element, just restrict the number of, uh, of length. Or you can put one if you want it to be kind of required for something. Okay, autocomplete, you probably guessed it. Autocomplete is, allows you to complete the, uh, the text. 
So if I put, for example, um, Oregon, it will remember that I had Oregon before, so it will allow me to autocomplete it, or I can delete so I don't see it again. Uh, password, I think, I don't think, it, no, autocomplete does not work for password for the obvious reasons. Uh, email, you see there's autocomplete because I used these before, so now I can just click on them, go back, M, and then it's and then it's in there. You can turn it off if you want to disable it, okay? But it's going to be on because we like it. I love autocomplete. Disable false. Disable and read only are very similar. Let's put disable true. This means that I will not be able to um, use the input elements, nor will I be able to even click on them. They're all disabled. If you wanted to, you can disable according to the input element. Like if input element is uh, type is uh, text, you can say disabled because you don't want the user to use that. Or if user is above a certain uh, lives in a certain zip code, you disable a certain uh, input. So you can use this. This is great. Um, read only is very similar to disable, but but this is false. It still allows the user to read what's in there. So if a user has put some information in there, I will still uh, be present. I got a cardinal outside my window. Um, it will still be be present. You see, you can click on it, but you, the user can't do anything. So it is kind of disabled, but but the web app and the server can still read the information in there. All right. Required false means I'm not requiring the user to put anything in there. If I change that to true. If I change that to true, it's going to see, let's reload, it's going to make everything required. So everything is going to be read because now this applies inside the for loop, so everything is going to be required. Of course, you can you can divide these up to different DCC inputs, like the first one will be a, a number, and then there's create another one down here, which will be text, and another one, another one. I just did in a for loop, so it's easier to, um, it's less code. Uh, so you see how everything is ready because it is required. You can still click enter when it's not, you know, without anything in there, but it just gives a hint to the user to require to put something in there. You see? Perfect. And once I put something, it's not red anymore. Great. Size refers to, oh, let's put require false, so I'm not seeing too much red on the screen and going crazy. Size 20. So this is the number of characters that will be visible inside the box. So right now it's 20. Look at the size, because it's allowing the size of 20 characters. But if I put the box, let's say, it, let's double the size, look what happens. I'm actually increasing the size of the box to allow for 40 characters visibly because you can put remember you can put from 0 to 50 right here but visibly it's allowing for 40 characters so this equals 40 let's even put more let's even put um, 80 in there ridiculously high nobody should ever put 80 but assume just for tutorial purposes Let's look, you see, they're a lot bigger because it allows 80 characters. Now, visibly, because I'm putting 0 to 50, so you can only put 50 characters, but visibly, you can see up to 80. Okay? Let's put this back to 20. Now, the last couple of things are things that uh, take a lot of time uh, to explain, So I, and I explained it in other videos, so I don't want to uh, waste your time or make you see things twice. If you want to learn more about how to style the input element or how to use a CSS document to style the element, these are very similar. This uses CSS, and this is just use a dictionary here in the code. Um, just go to the drop-down video, click on the card above, and go to minute 13, and you'll learn all about style and class name. If you want to learn about persistence, which is very important to know, I would really recommend learning about this. Same video, the drop-down on the card above, uh, minute 16, 20. You'll see all about the persistence and what this means. Okay, so one thing I want to show you before we go into the input uh, text uh, element is this is a good practice to, to have, uh, to maintain. I usually print things inside the, the function, the callback function, uh, because as I update things, I can see in this console how things are updated. So let's see, I'm going to Alt F4 so you can see this, make this a little bit bigger. Because I'm printing stuff, every time I update the graph or the elements, I get these. So you see, um, let's go back to the graph. 
let's update this and let's say I want to update number to 2015. So now look at how the number from none will change to 2015. 15. Now password is still none, text is none, telephone is 10, and search is is uh, disease is 10 because I I pre-populated the information in there uh, in the function because I wanted uh, some kind of number to be in there and I wanted the map to represent some kind of disease and I did this with right here populate disease and populate state number. Um, so, but if I change the, tele the telephone, or in this case, the type of state, the state number, let's change it to number one, I think is Alabama, then we'll see that Alabama becomes, oh, come on, one. Oh, good, did it. So Alabama became one, and you can see here that, where is Alabama? The telephone is number one, which in the Excel sheet or pandas refers to Alabama, and so on and so on. Let's change one last thing from disease. This is the search button, so I'm going to change disease to um, other, enter, and you'll see search other. So good practice. Make sure that you, um, um, uh, for learning purposes, print stuff so you see how things change as, you, as you're, you're playing around with the input boxes. Okay, so now we're going to look into the input text. Great. So the input text um, uh, has even more functions than the numeric input or inputs that, that deal with numbers. Here, what we're going to do is we're only going to focus on this is a new uh, a new code, so just click on it below for it's called the the input underscore non underscore text dot pi. Just open in my GitHub below the video. Okay, so we'll go straight into this, and we'll look into all these parameters that are also in the documentation. Um, uh, just make sure that you'll see below here. I'm just printing everything out onto the page, so you'll see instead of printing in the console down here like I did before with the non-text, now I'm going to print everything into the the page layout. And again, this is the callback and the uh, and the function that connects everything to each other, the text on the page and the input. To learn more about it, and again, you have the card above to see all about the introduction to Dash, how you connect that. Okay, let's focus on these. These are very, very important. These are going to teach you all about the input text button. And even if you don't use dash, you're going to learn all about what these means in, in the lingo of input so you can use it with uh, Python or maybe different languages. So we have only one input text um, uh, uh, element here, input element here, and it's going to be called type text. You see right here. I'm going to give it this ID so I can connect it later to the callback. Debounce true. Remember, debounce means that I have to wait for an enter to be clicked before actually the information updates. You see, now it just updated. Pattern allows you to use um, regex, uh, regular expressions, um, to tell the user what kind of pattern is acceptable inside that box. So I'm going to say I want the user to put to start with the letter, uh, any letter, a capital or or a small uppercase or a lowercase letter, with uh, and and forever ever like the, and then whatever they want they can put numbers. After that they can put whatever they want, special special characters, but they have to start with a letter. So if they do not start with a letter, everything is fine with the letter. But if I start with a number, it's going to be red, and that is because of the pattern. So it, it really gives a hint to the user to make sure. You see how it says in the tooltip, please master requested format. And you can put like a text above this and say uh, the format should be blah, 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 blah. Spell check is true. Obviously, we all know what spell check is. If not, just Google it in uh, Merriam-Webster dictionary, and I'm sure you'll uh, understand. Um, but let's see how that works. If I say, for example, the color blue, everything is okay. But if I put this into it, you see how it comes red because it's saying obviously that, that showing them is spelling is wrong. Great, so that's the spell check. Um, input mode, what well, this is just it just provides a hint to the browser on the type of data that might be entered by the user. So we have several options. One is Latin. Let's see the other options in the documentation. Where is input mode? Input mode. Right here, you have verbatim, Latin name email, telephone, so it's not the type, it just gives a hint to the browser what's going to be used. I'm assuming like if you say uh, email inside the browser, um, when you do autocomplete or when you ask Google cookies to Google Chrome cookies to autocomplete stuff, it will know that email will go into this box because input mode 
tells the browser that uh, this box is email. Name text, also the name of the control, which is submitted with the form data. So you can you can use this really for callbacks and say, say which input um, was submitted or what is the name of this input that was submitted. And because uh, we put here text, we would know that this is the name of the input in case we want to play around with it according to the user uh, choices. List of browsers, uh, this identifies a list of pre-identified options to suggest to the user. So my list, as you probably imagine by now, was, uh, erase this, was blue, yellow, green. Okay, and how did I do this? I did, you have to do this in the Dash app in order to do that. You have to create an HTML data list, give it an ID. This ID is going to go into here. They have to be equal. Okay, and in the children, you're going to have the options. And H HTML options from the dash HTML components is the options that are going to appear in the list. So this is very similar to um, to drop down, right? But um, so people usually use drop downs, but drop downs don't have all these different parameters and all these options. So if you want to have all these options and just have like a, a, a hint or a suggestion of a list of what the user should put in, you can put this in there. But uh, you don't have to if you don't want to, or if it just confuses you, just let it go. But it's just another cool option that you can do with the input element. And submit is the number of times the enter key was pressed while the input had focus. What does focus mean? And you'll see here autofocus true. Focus means that um, you're actually in it, right? When I just clicked on it, now the, the app is focused on this input element. If I had another input element here, I'll be focused on this input element or that input element. Now I'm focused on this one. Because I put autofocus true, automatically when I upload the, the page, this is gonna, you see how it's focused here? Automatically when I upload the page, if I write something, it goes directly in there because the autofocus true is for this input element right here that is the text. If I put false, it will not be focused. Let's see, save that. Uh, now if I reload, you see it's not focused. So if I write something, it's not gonna go in there because it's not focused inside the element. So we'll change that to true and save. And go back, and now if I upload, it automatically focus. I don't have to click anything. I write, and it automatically goes in there. So now that we know what focus is, uh, the end submit means the number of time that the the, the enter key was um, was entered uh, was pressed while the input had focused. So if I put here, even if I don't write anything, I'm focusing it. I don't write anything, and I click enter. You'll see number one goes here. Enter click number one. I click one again, enter click two, three, and I get also the timestamp. See, today is 2020, May 7th, 11.15. Click again, 31 seconds, 38, 39 seconds. So this is pretty cool. Even if I put text and I click enter, it's also going to um, uh, raise this number. Now, how do I do this? Uh, uh, click and timestamp because this is right here. Okay. And I'm doing this because, again, um, from the very beginning, I showed you how... Um, I'm going to put into HTML, I'm going to put into here uh, a div, just an empty div of times clicked and the timestamp, and then connecting it with the video that you hopefully have seen by now, um, connecting it with uh, inside the callback. So every time I'm actually putting a submit or a time submit, it actually returns that same thing inside that div above. So this is return the number of times and the, the submit submit time returns into these divs right here. All right. Again, all of this will be in the Dash video introduction to Dash that's coming up in a few days. Okay. So we have submit. We have uh, we learned about and submit timestamp, uh, which is really good when you want to say uh, tell me when the user submitted a certain a certain uh, um, document, not a certain text, or hit the submit button, you'll have a timestamp so you can compare over time how many were submitted or who submitted and what, why, when, where. And blur, blur is the opposite of focus it wins it, when it's not focused. So, so right now it's focused, but if I lose focus by going out of the page, out of the input element with my mouse and clicking on it, five becomes six. Let's click on it again. Well, 
Now it doesn't mean anything because it's not focused. But if I focus and unfocus, look how it goes from up from six to seven. Seven. Focus, unfocus, eight. So this is how you lose. Uh, it's tracking how many times you lose input focus. And it's also tracking the time you lose it. So this was 26 seconds. Let's hit enter here. Uh, and then unfocus. And you see now it's 39 seconds. All right. Um, this is selection direction, start and, and selection end. What these things mean in uh, Python, well, not in Python, in the general HTML language, is the following. It shows you that you can select, um, it tracks the selection of the mouse caret um, until it gives you that information. So if I, I selected, let's say, R all the way to A, which will be probably the first, second, and third, and fourth index, click me, you'll see that the selection start with zero, it ended at three because it ended at A, and the selection undefined. Um, I'll just do this, select long, and click me, and you'll see that this is what selection inside the input element. To be honest, I do not know how this is implemented. That's why I left it uh, um, hashed out, because I do not know how it's implemented in Dash. I've asked um, the Dash community, so if I find an answer on how this is implemented, I'm going to add it to the comments below so you can learn all about it. But this is what it means. And you can read more about it in the browser. If you learn how to do this, and if you, you learn uh, how to make this uh, function, please let me know. I'd love to add it to the, to the comments below, or just or you yourself add it to the comments below. I, I would appreciate it. So that's all, folks. I've taught you all about the input element, all about how you can um, manipulate it and master it using Dash by Plotly. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to uh, my channel. Turn on your notifications so every week you'll get uh, a new Dash component and a new element of uh, data visualization in Python to learn and to expand your skills in data visualization. Uh, hit the like button below. That always helps. And let's get into our challenge. <music> All right, folks, so our challenge today is to add code to the callback function. Remember, the callback function is the uh, function that we define underneath the callback. So if the enter button is clicked by the user three times, the text below the input element box would return game over. And this is what it's going to look like. You're going to build a code. So you can have this or not have this. It doesn't really matter. You're going to build a code. So if I... Um, let's say click enter, I'm going to put the, and I click enter once, nothing happens, just that comes up. I'm going to click it twice, it's okay, but if I click it three times, I have a text that comes up as game over. So see, see how you play around with it. If you have difficulties, let me know, uh, but try it. Um, I'm going to put on the, actually in the, in the first comment section, I'm going to put um, the solution to this challenge, but try it before we look at the solution so you can learn all about it. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you, um, you create beautiful input elements and create uh, great interactive graphs um, and enjoy it while you do it. Thank you.